I got everything else done today that I needed to do, so it's time to have a little fun and build the E1. I'm going to call this my, well, the name of this car is going to be the Camino. So that's, I think that's kind of funny. But anyway, uh, it says to get these six millimeter, or I'm sorry, eight millimeter screws. My local hardware store only had 12, so I've marked them in red. And I'm going to go out and shorten all of these down to uh, the point where I can't see the red anymore. And they will be 8 millimeter screws. And I'll probably do something with that to change the color a little bit on a few of these things. Just so it's not so orange. But um, probably be, be a, you know, a Sharpie type paint job. So... I'm worried more about what it drives like than looks like, so uh, it's time to get started with that. I'm just going to go out, hit these on my grinder, and uh, shorten them, and we'll start the build. Alright, I said last night, the first thing I do is get a weight measurement for all these pieces, and I've knocked out all the little lattice work that is not necessary that happens when you 3D print something. So let's pile it all on and find out exactly how much this all weighs together. So this is going to be frame and body. 34 grams exactly. Um, I know the Chevy C10 body is about 44, 45, so um, just the body alone, let alone the frame. So it's going to be a significant reduction in weight. That's pretty good. Uh, I do know that the the uh, buggy chassis that I use, these here, that you've seen on some of my other rigs, I get them down to about 25 grams a piece, and I feel like that's pretty low. Um, I'll weigh the frame rails as well once I pull those off of the uh, donor vehicle, and we'll get a, a total weight for it. All of the screws have been shortened to about 8 millimeters, and just a fun fact, when you put them on a grinding wheel to grind them, there's not a whole lot of mass there. So um, what happens is, I just almost dropped the camera, sorry about that. Uh, what happens is they turn almost uh, orange hot right away and become molten. So um, don't hold them with your hands, hold them with pliers. And hold the pliers right at the end of where you want to cut because it'll bend these little screws when they get that hot. So... Um, Next thing to do is figure out how the pieces all to go all go together. I might have to look around on the internet for a few pictures of how this happened, and uh, I'll show you how it's done, I guess. So I decided to add a little bit of swag to it and painted my roof and hood black. And just a note to self: when you're working with 3D printed parts, if you decide to use the microwave method of making them dry faster by throwing them underneath a hairdryer, 3D parts will sort of uh, change shape on you with minimal heat. But this is how the hood goes on there. And uh, I just want to do something different just to make it mine because I've seen so many people have different paint schemes now. And I just thought I'd do the hood and roof and then um, the suspension parts that the uh, shocks will hook up to. I thought it needed to be black and these would be black too later on. The fans because fans are black or silver. I don't know. One of the two. Maybe I'll make it silver. Maybe I'll make it black. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But uh, just proceeding with the build trying to figure out which parts go where. I'm pretty sure that uh, well I'm trying to figure it out still. But something I thought earlier, the bladed part goes towards the front, like that. Initially I thought it went backwards, but it doesn't. And this hooks together kind of like that. And the roof obviously goes here. So I'm going to start putting some of those pieces together. I decided to go with black for the fans, just because it looks cool. Um, next thing on this uh, checklist is while these dry and sort of harden a little bit, um, 
it's time to strip down the test mule and get it ready for transplant into the E1 chassis that I'm calling the Camino. Here we go. I'll be right back as soon as this is stripped down. That didn't take very long to take the guts out of the test mule. I lighten up the ESC tray too because that's weighed up high that doesn't need to be there. It's probably three or four grams and uh, on something this small that much matters. And you can see I've high clearanced out the links, good bends in those already. And they're uh, even clearanced against themselves so that when they articulate they won't knock into each other and uh, limit the travel. So. Um, I've got a really good base to start off with. Ended up going with a uh, barrage motor here just because uh, my dad's truck, his motor burned out and um, it's a lot of work initially to swap a barrage and uh, I just don't want to put them through all that but it's good for my truck. I'm happy to have it. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I think just kind of hook up the side panels here and sort of test fit the suspension back together and um, see what needs to be built from there. Looks like it goes right in there. That's kind of how it's going to look. And it's just filling the gaps after that. Maybe I'll do it wrong. Maybe I won't. Uh, I don't know, but you're on the journey with me. So um, if it's wrong, I'll let you know why and how to fix it. All right. Um, in the process of uh, looking at a few things online, how these work, how they go together, I've already noticed some things that could be different or changed in some way, and I'll kind of illustrate that. Uh, if you're going to put one of these together, the side with the indented screws, the screw holes, I should say, are the outsides. And when they print, the holes come out really small, and you might want to just run a bolt or a, a screw through there to just kind of open them up before you even begin this uh, process of assembly just so that the screws can go through each point. Also, um, when you go to install this onto the center skid plate, you'll notice there's a, a corresponding hole for all the screw holes here. That to that, that to that, to that, that to that. But there is not one here. And there needs to be an indention here for this bump out on the chassis, on the center skid plate. So all the screw holes line up, but if you were to just bolt it down, that's a problem because that is uh, what centers the skid plate here and here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a knife out and just kinda make an indention here and here so that these have a place to go. I'll get that done, be right back. I'll put a couple of very light pencil marks, one here, one here. And um, in the words of Blake Shelton, let's do this right. I'm gonna go out to my drill press. I've got a 1 16th inch drill bit in it currently, and I'm just gonna drill halfway through that. And not completely through, because I don't want it to come all the way through, but it'll give these little, these little, I don't know what you call them, little studs on the side of the um, skid plate, a place to go. So I'll be right back. That's what it looks like. You can't even see them through the other side, but I've done this thing right. I can bolt them up now. These 3D printed holes are real small and it might be good for you before you install them on the vehicle to sort of pre-install your screws a little bit because once they're on there, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to put on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other two um, longer screws in the front and back here that go for the suspension. And um, once that's complete, I'll have a chassis that could drive. So I uh, won't have the electronics set up yet, but the chassis itself could actually drive with just this piece and uh, the links reattached. Okay, pre installed, ready to go on. Well, here's a little tip for you. If you want the front of your truck to flex well, you've got to round out the, the uh, corners here. They come from the factory with squared off corners, and I have no idea why. 
that to me seems stupid because it limits the amount of flex that it can take inside of these boxes and uh, once you get rid of that it can do a bit more and I even widen out the uh, I put I take that ball joint out and uh, put this in there and spin it and it gives that joint just a little bit more flexibility so when you put this back together it will uh, have more front flex and this is a good time to check to make sure that you like the amount of flex that your car gives you because later on with the um, shocks on it may limit what it can do and I like my suspension to be able to flex farther than the shocks will allow that way I know that I know what the limiting factors are in the truck it, I want it to be the shocks not the suspension itself binding up right, with that uh, fixed I can almost turn this vertical with the shocks off so there you go at this point in the build it's a good time to make sure that you have your um, drive shafts aligned properly so they're phased correctly and basically if it makes a u-shape here on the inner portion it should make an opposite u-shape here but they should be parallel same for the back I've got the one coming out of the drive after out of the transmission the pin is here and this aligns this gap also aligns and they're phased properly I had a comment on YouTube talking about if I would ever build a belly dragger and one of the things that's cool about this particular chassis is you have multiple uh, points for attaching the shocks and um, the shot com full shot compression is one thing that limits the um, belly drag capability uh, if necessary I could even mount the shocks up higher in the on the, one of these bars if necessary but uh, if I wanted to lower the CG even more but beyond that you can only lower it so far because the upper rear um, the upper rear suspension link will hit the bottom of the motor and I've got a barrage motor here and it's a bit longer than a stock motor and it's about the same size as the PN70 but it would sit up higher and uh, limit some of this belly drag uh, eliminate some of this coming up and hitting the motor what I've done to compensate for that is just chopped out half my length and it's not something you would ever see when it's driving but just a few degrees here equals a long distance out on the end of the arm and uh, let's see it's probably worth about five six millimeters by chopping off two at the beginning so it's worth quite a bit and what I've done here is I've uh, actually made the suspension so it can flex up higher then the shock's going to let it. And that's, I like that because the shock is a limiting factor, not the suspension itself. And something I just realized is anybody who runs a barrage motor is going to run into this little um, place where it's hitting. And that is not good. I'm going to go back on my old cars and uh, that have barrages in. I actually only have one other that has a barrage and I'll fix it on that car as well. But the back of this thing is perfect. No binding, nothing flexes as far as suspension links. Everything moves as it should. And uh, if, you, if you have a suspension link that is bending instead of the spring, then there's, some, there's a problem where it's hitting something and stopping the motion. And as I put things together, I look for the things like that that can interfere with the motion of the car and uh, correct them as I go. I decided to take a little bit of the side panel off and um, install an area for the uh, heat sinks for my motor to dissipate heat. And they weren't going to fit inside of that cover that it had and um, probably wouldn't work very good anyway if they did. They kind of need open air, so I've changed the design a little bit and actually carefully hacked out the axial symbol. Oops. All right, right now I'm trying to put the nose pieces together, and it's kind of hard because these screws have to go through 
both of these pieces here through the side into that and until this is all bolted together it's not a stable structure it's it wants to move about and um, I'm kind of having a hard time getting this screw to go into that hole and into this top hole to tie it all together so um, I need to do that off camera because it's harder than I would have thought but it'll be cool when it's done I just have to make it happen all right this is the front of the truck and I'm finding out that with the Emacs servo I don't know if it does it with the stock servo but at full compression it gets into the grill just a little bit I mean it's slight but it's happening I can if I can rock that it's stopping on the uh, on the grill so what I'm gonna do so I'm just going to shave the front of this a little bit. Hopefully I can make it still look right, but I just need a little bit of clearance there for the top of that servo. I suppose I could always kind of file the back of the servo case too a little bit, but um, nothing a Dremel tool won't fix. So I'm going to start by taking just the front of this off and then uh, maybe some sandpaper to smooth it back out so it looks right. I just sort of cup this edge a little bit here with that Dremel and uh, use the, the drum and now the servo just passes. I might hit it just a little. Uh, it still rubs a little bit on the corner here. So I'll hit that one more time and then uh, kind of smooth it back out and it should be ready to go. That has proper clearance now. I'll make it pretty later. Nothing rubs. I mean, it's to the millimeter. That's perfect. Running into another clearance issue here. By using a barrage motor, it puts the um, ESC tray, which I believe sits here, right into the motor. So hopefully there'll be enough space. I was kind of mapping it out. And these little brace pieces here in the back for it to fit um, between the motor and the uh, rear of this, I think I'm gonna have to cut these braces out. I don't think they need to be there because the ESC doesn't weigh that much, but um, one more thing to clearance. Uh, I guess that's what happens when you don't use stock parts for a custom build. You have to further custom build it. So I got the front looking pretty good now. Um, I don't think it'll matter any. I might hit it with sandpaper later, like I said before, but I'm just trying to get this thing put together, running, and sort of looking right. I think the front here is where the battery goes. I'm not for sure 100%, but I think it goes like that. And uh, you'll see here, I don't know where else anything would go. So uh, I'm gonna go with that until I know different. This thing doesn't come with instructions. So, um, it's uh, go with what you know, I guess, at this point. I think this there's a post that goes across here, the roof here, and the, um, you know, the roof, obviously, goes where the roof should go. These go kind of down here in the back, and there's a center post right here that I think I'm, I don't know, should I leave that orange or not? Yeah, probably. I'll probably leave that orange. But this goes across, ties the sides of the chassis or the uh, frame together. So uh, one nice thing is if the clearances are wrong, I know from the uh, hair dryer experiment that if you heat it up a little bit, this stuff becomes very moldable. And uh, see, right now I've got a little bit of a lean going on the right side. Kind of don't like that, but uh, I know how to fix it. So I'll just heat that up a little bit with with uh, um, hair dryer, and that'll come right over to the left, no problem. More in a minute. Oh yeah. Um, so the ESC tray, I'm just gonna hit it right here with my Dremel drum again, and clearance that for the motor, and should go right in. That was what it took to make sure that it clears the motor area. And now I just need to bolt it in. 
Also another thing I'm noticing on the rear shocks, if the screw goes all the way in, it protrudes into where the ESC needs to go. And I think in order for it to fit, it's going to need every bit of that space. So um, it's not going to work if that thing's sticking out into where the ESC needs to be. So um, when you install your shocks, either shorten the screw or don't screw them in all the way because that uh, will end up not working out well. It might actually be good to leave them out just a little bit and I'll show you why here in a second as soon as I get that screw to not stick out through the center. And the reason that is, um, by extending those out a little bit, it gives a little bit more clearance right here on the corner for this screw to miss the spring here. And you don't want that hitting. And if, if it's not screwed in all the way, if this screw isn't in all the way, it gives a little bit more clearance right here. So um, I have to uh, take this side off and put a screw in there. And I'm using a 1.8 by uh, 8 instead of the SCX24 screws because the chassis ones seem to like a, just a slightly bigger uh, diameter. Otherwise, if I used one of the SCX24 screws for the... Um, printed to printed applications where you're taking it through a printed piece into a printed piece it wants a little bit larger diameter hole than the uh, SCX 24s I think these are 1.4 millimeters wide I'm not sure but I think that's the case so I have both these are the ones I chopped down earlier in the video and I'm really glad I have them right now because uh, they're pretty necessary at this point I'm gonna need seven more I hope I have seven more when you go I have five six seven I think I have seven um, buy more than the instructions say because you'll need them um, I got ten and I wish I'd have bought probably twelve or thirteen so I need to find one I dropped and uh, I'll continue the build the latest modification I took the sticker off this which is no big deal but I've also sort of trim the back corner of this with a Dremel just to um, reduce the uh, inner footprint of it. I also ground away at the front side of the ESC case and kind of made that concave and the reason I did that is for the um, barrage motor terminal here to stick back and um, the other thing I had to do was delete the on off switch from sticking out it's going to be permanently in the on position, but that's okay because I unplug my battery every time I use it like you're supposed to anyway. So by doing those two things, it now sits in there just right. And uh, I don't know how it could be more, more snug than that, but that's just right sits in there no extra space nothing hits and uh, it's ready to go anytime you get 3d printed material hot it always smells the same I'm not sure if I like it but it's useful when you've got stuff you need to get done I trim the corner of this and hopefully that will be enough room to get it around the um, the crossbar when I put that in. I'm going to have to figure out a thing for the heat sinks. I do want to run a heat sink. Oh, the front's got a problem. I'm going to need more screws, I can tell you that. Um, my heat sinks might be a little bit of an issue because I do want to use them because they're They'll save your motor, at least prolong their life. And uh, I've not had a single one fail since I started using them. But this side panel is going to be really hard to deal with if I have a heat sink glued onto the side of the motor. It's proving to be difficult to get in and out right now 
without a heat sink there. So I uh, need to do this off camera again. This build has taken a massive part of my day, but I'm starting to get near the end of it, I think. Uh, the crossbar that's supposed to go through the middle here, from here to here, if I put it in there, I couldn't have a st the uh, steering servo connection right there. So I'm not going to use the bar that goes across from this hole to the opposite side. Um, I changed a few other things too. Um, I'll get back to that in a minute. Alright, some more stuff on this. Um, the battery will go here. I shortened the servo wires. Um, the fact that I have no um, on off switch anymore. I don't like how I can, couldn't really reach in there to pull the plug out so I made this short extension cord. I got hot glue on the end to keep those uh, leads from touching. I'm just going to plug that in and that is going to become a permanent part of the of the uh, ESC at this point as long as it's in this rig. That way I don't have to reach clear down in there or pull the wires out by the you know unplug it by the wires I did make sure the polarity is correct so when I plug it in it just turns on and uh, this is my on off switch now uh, that's okay I'm fine with that uh, the last thing I need to do is um, put the roof on and the um, radiators but I don't know that I have the proper screws to do that the screws that I have um, that fit through the holes aren't big enough to lock into the the printed material on the other side, so I'm having some issues with that. Also, um, at full compression, the rear links are actually hitting the bottom of the rear of this vehicle, and I've still got you know some distance on either side of that that. Uh, I'm giving away some articulation basically not much and honestly it's probably not an issue because it'll never reach the bottom of its travel during really anything at all um, I'm just gonna leave it for now because I don't think it'll ever hit that it's just not enough it's not heavy enough to bottom itself out there's no speed there's no force um, I can't see how it's going to do it. It's. I may just round this off a little bit just to give it a little more clearance, but I don't think it's really that necessary. Um, I'll do it anyway, though. But uh, I'm going to test it with these tires tonight. I'm running out of time for tonight, and uh, it's after 10 o'clock. I need to get to bed. So um, I'll test it with these tires tonight and then put the mudslingers on it tomorrow and give it a proper test. But uh, I'll get the roof and radar put on and hopefully they'll lock in with the screws that I have. This is what it looks like finished. Um, I've got my heat sink there, two of them. I'll probably put one on the other side and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this hood. It doesn't like to stay down. Um, I don't know where the wheel nut is to hook my right front tire on or the left front tire on and I need to figure that out before I can do anything with this but I'm excited to try it it looks cool and uh, probably will do pretty well um, last thing I want to do is weigh the frame and uh, Jeep body that I took off of this chassis and we'll see if it doesn't equal out I think I cut enough material off of this that um, it's probably down to about 32 or 33 grams for the this uh, orange and black chassis that I just made. So I'll compare that to the Jeep on the uh, metal frame that I took off. Well, this will help tell if it was worth what I've done. So uh, we started off with this chassis. All the pieces weighed uh, 34 grams before we started. There's 23 and here comes the body on top of that. And it is not touching anything else. So I'll move this away just to prove it. 58 grams. So 
by putting this on here, I've basically dropped the weight of about two AAA batteries. Um, it's uh, 24 grams. That's the same thing as adding 12 grams of the front and back axle. So I'm sure it will make some improvement. And uh, the articulation on it's really good. I'll have to I'll have to do the same quarter test I did before once I get the wheel attached. But I don't know if you can really see that, but it can go pretty steep before any before it lifts the tire. Um, should do real well. So uh, I'll look around for that last little uh, wheel nut and hopefully give it a drive for the first time tonight. Well, it's ready. I found the uh, lug nut for the wheel, and this is the first time it's going to move under its own power. And it looks like it's going to have pretty good approach clearances, at least from the back. Um, there's not enough here to keep it from flipping over backwards like my other buggies. Um, I might work something out later to... Uh, take care of that, but for now it is what it is and uh, I'm just gonna do a quick run on the rocks not a real test, but just a fun drive just to Make it worth all the work. I've just done to it First time moving under its own power Tires are kind of small for that rock that's trying to go up. It'll make it happen though. Um, I'm not going to work on it tonight, but tomorrow I'll put the scramblers on it and it'll be a completely different truck. I'm kind of excited about it really. A few bugs to work out, like the battery cover. It's popping up. I don't know what to do about that. Um, Just a few issues. Nothing that's not insurmountable, but it's uh, it's getting there. Even with these little tires, it crawls pretty good. Maybe I'll try these for a while. for this guy. Well, I do think it does better than it did um, with the SCX24 chassis. I wouldn't swear to that, but... seems like it's having an easier time with everything than it did before. Yeah, it definitely is. It struggled on that rock last time. Remember how it got stuck and wouldn't even go over? Well, kind of doing it, but not, not bad. Um... I do need to figure out something about this battery. Oh, let's see. I got a, I've got slots in there. I didn't notice that before. And I'm gonna put the regular battery strap through there and that'll tie it down. That'll be good. There it is. I put the stock battery strap in there. Now I can strap the battery down and it won't go anywhere, which is good. I'll throw a piece of Velcro on that too and it'll just be kind of a humped up looking thing a little. I don't know. If 
figure that out too. I'm gonna do a little bit of running off camera just to uh, end the night. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll do a proper test of this later.